This movie describes how to use the pair of activities called zooming decimals. We have a red point along a number line, and our goal is to determine the location of the point. I see that it sits somewhere between 6 and 7, so I'm going to estimate that it's at 6 and a half. How can I get a better estimation of the point? Well, if I had a magnifying glass, I could take a magnified view of this portion of the number line between 6 and 7 to get a better sense of the point's location. Well, this zoom button here does the same thing. It's going to give me a magnified view of the number line between 6 and 7. Let's watch what happens when I press it. We see the interval between 6 and 7 expands. We see the same red point at the same location as on our original number line, but now we have additional tick marks that are evenly spaced that allow us to read the location of the point. I see that the point is sitting at 6 and 4 tenths. I can check by pressing Show Location, and I see that I'm correct, and I can also try something kind of fun. I can press Animate Point. As I do, the point moves along both number lines, always in the same location on both lines, and it's moving by tenths. So that I see here that as the point moves between 8 and 9, 8 and 9 are my endpoints on the tenths number line, and when the point gets to a value between 9 and 10, my endpoints are now 9 and 10, and I can read the exact location of the point as it moves from tick mark to tick mark. To stop the animation, I'll press Animate Point again. Now I'll press Reset to return to just a single number line. And to create a new challenge for myself, I'll simply drag this red point anywhere I like along the number line. When I'm done with tenths, I can move on to hundredths. So what is the location of this red point? Well, to me it looks like it's well, maybe about three and two tenths. Let's check by pressing zoom. The interval of the number line between three and four expands, and I can see that my estimate of three and two tenths wasn't bad, but it's actually a little less, as this point represents the same point as on my first number line. So perhaps my point is at three and thirteen hundredths. That's my new guess. Well, let's zoom in one more time. So now we're zooming between 3 and 1 tenth and 3 and 2 tenths. And I see that the actual location is 3 and 14 hundredths. As before, I can press Show Location. I can animate my point to watch it move along all three number lines simultaneously. I can press Reset to return to just a single number line and I can drag my point to any new location to create a new challenge. Finally, there's a page called Beyond. What is the location of this point? Again, I could estimate it, and I'll estimate that it's at 5 and 8 tenths, and I'll zoom in. Well, actually it's somewhere between 5 and 7 tenths and 5 and 8 tenths. So I could zoom in again and guess maybe 5 and 71 hundredths. Hmm, not quite. So I could keep making new estimates here and zoom in two more times. But each time that I zoom in, I see that my point is not sitting on a tick mark. I don't have such an easily read value. And even here, it's not sitting on a tick mark. So the idea is that I could keep zooming in again and again and again and get ever finer estimates of the point's location. In fact, if I press Show Location, I see the location to quite a few decimal values to the right of zero. So this explains how to use the pair of activities zooming decimals. These activities were inspired by Paul Goldenberg at Education Development Center.